So, um, Walt Whitman, part two. Last time we started talking about Song of Myself, this remarkable thing, this remarkable flow, inspired flow of, of words that seem to have arisen from this spiritual awakening um, that was experienced by this second-rate journalist named Walter Whitman, uh, who invented a, new, a character named Walt Whitman, who in the famous frontispiece, the famous picture in the front, had graduated from being kind of a would-be dandy to a, a rough working man, all American, um, with sexy bedroom eyes, standing in a Mick Jagger stance. And, um, and this flow of poetry, the song of myself, the celebrating the capital S self, and all its attributes, all its manifestations, uh, in the in, in the lowercase world, because Walt sees that it's it's all good. So let's go back to where we we left off, and I think I mentioned at the end last time. We're not going to be able to go through this whole the whole fifty two sections of it line by line, but but we want to unpack some of the the highlights, and I hope you'll continue on your own. Um, uh, uh, re reading the, the the whole thing because man, it's just, there's just so much good there, and I will uh, unmute you, or I'll give you permission to unmute yourselves for just any time you 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 want to jump in. Feel free to unmute yourselves at that time, and and we'll do that. So. Um, Okay, so here's our text. We left off somewhere around here in the, in the middle of section three. By the way, these sections, the 52 sections, the division into 52 sections uh, did not exist in Whitman's first edition of the thing. I mentioned he kept revising and expanding the book for the rest of his life. And um, uh, there are literary critics and scholars who feel the first edition is really the, the one to read. Um, and, um, you know, the whole thing was one flow. But anyway, here we are. Talking about himself. Sure as the most certain sure. Plumb in the uprights, well entreated, braced in the beam, stout as a horse, right? He's describing his, his physical beingness now. We've already seen the self, which is, you know, every atom belonging to me as well belongs to you. Um, but it does not exclude the physical self. And this is, this is huge. This is the big step beyond the transcendentalists such as Emerson and Thoreau, who were so interested in the, the capital S self, so interested in the, the self, which is pure boundless beingness, as people who get onto the spiritual path tend to be, that um, sometimes they kind of leave behind the, the physical part. But look at this, stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical, right? charged with, with juice, I and this mystery, here we stand. Isn't that interesting? I and this mystery. What is I? Well, maybe, maybe I here means the, the, the conventional small s self, the, 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 the self that has a name, Walt or Dean, and then here's the mystery, boundlessness. Or maybe I is the boundlessness, and then you know, some of you may have experienced this after 
en enough months and years of meditation and more and more feeling like you're the boundlessness. And then you look in the mirror and you go, what is that thing? Is that, is that hunk of flesh still hanging around here? That's the mystery. So that's also possible. But in any case, the next line, clear and sweet is my soul and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Boy, that would make a good tattoo, wouldn't it? Right? How much more deeply insightful, how much more thoroughly non-dual this is than so much of what you hear on the spiritual path, whether it's the meditative path or the Christian path or the, the Hindu path, the Buddhist path, right? There's so much that, so much striving for the soul, the transcendent, the infinite, that there's some, uh, so often some sense that, yeah, but the finite, the physical is, you know, that's, yeah, that's not so great. That is there to be transcended. This is what my old teacher Maharishi used to call 200% of life. He said, we want 100% of the relative, the finite, 100% of the absolute, the infinite. It's all clear and sweet. It's all good, he's saying, but much more beautifully. Lack one lacks both, right? You gotta have both. Lack one lacks both. And the unseen is proved by the seen, right? The unseen, the transcendent is somehow the physical is the, is the, the proof. The physical is the proof of the non-physical of the transcendent till that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. You know, it's like the infinite keeps emerging as the finite, then the finite keeps emerging as the infinite. This is really right out of the Prajnaparamita Sutra, which is the, the foundation text of, of non-dual Buddhism, where it's, you know, and really the E equals MC squared of non-dual philosophy there is... Form is no other than emptiness. Emptiness, no other than form. Form is exactly emptiness. Emptiness, exactly form. And emptiness, you know, that has some, often a scary ring to the Western ear. But emptiness means just empty of problems, empty of limitation, empty of binding specificity. The, so the empty emptiness means maybe openness is a better word, open, boundless, not closed in on itself, infinite. But what is the teaching? Emptiness is no other than form. Form is no other than emptiness. Right? And, and the remarkable thing is that it look, we're pretty sure Whitman didn't read any of these scriptures. You know, he had this famous one time he and Thoreau met. And Thoreau said, oh, have you read the Bhagavad Gita? And, and, and Whitman said, well, no, tell me about it. Showing the best and dividing it from the worst, age vexes age. Knowing the perfect fitness and equanimity of things, right? The perfect fitness and equanimity of things. Somehow, there's somehow... No matter what happens, no matter how things are, there is a perf perfectness to it. There's a fitness to it. There's an appropriateness to it. There's, there's, a, there's a, a rightness to it. Somehow the whole universe is unfolding in a way that's lawful. None of this is a mistake. How does he know that? When you have that experience clear enough, you know it. There's no way to explain it, but somehow, and I hope you can feel this, somehow in the simple, straightforward way that he states this stuff, you, you get a feeling of it. You're, 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 I mean, is it just me or you, you kind of, you're, you're, you're ready to believe it. There's, there's something about, there's something so persuasive, not that he's persuading us with logic, but there's, there's some 
thing about the the energy of the statement. It's so clearly he's you know coming from the mountaintop with the tablets in his hand that you just you kind of ready to go. Yeah, the perfect fitness and equanimity of all things. While they discuss, I am silent. Right? Who is they discussing? Well, remember from last week. This started, this section three started. I've heard what the talkers were talking, the talk at the beginning and the end, blah, 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 all the philosophy, all the theology, all the cosmology, blah, blah, blah. I don't talk at the beginning or the end. So, so he's picking up on that again, right? While they discuss, I am silent. Reminds me of a famous line from, from the Tao Te Ching. Those who those who speak do not know, those who know do not speak. <laughs> right? Those who speak do not know, those who know do not speak. Thank you. So, while they discuss, I am silent and go bathe and admire myself. Right? I'm not going to talk about philosophy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go bathe and, and admire my, my beautiful body. Right? And you admire yourself bathing, you're not just, you're not admiring your soul or just your soul. And that becomes very clear in the next bit. Welcome is every organ and attribute of me and, and of any man hearty and clean. Not an inch nor a particle of an inch is vile and none shall be less familiar than the rest. Huh, not an inch nor a particle of an inch of the body of the organs is vile. Is that, a, is that a usual idea in 1855? Is it a usual idea now? I saw uh, a cartoon in a magazine once. It showed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and you see the finger of God pointing down at them and, and the voice of God is saying, remember, you're made in my image, and parts of you are dirty. Okay, <laughs> that, that joke. Uh, uh, it's so absurd. You know, if we really believe we're made in God's image, if we really believe everything is the manifestation of, of the divine, right? For, then, then how can it be that any part of us, including our 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 organs of, of sexuality and our organs of elimination, all that. How can any of it be bad, be vile, be dirty, be not sacred? And of course, Whitman says it much more compactly and, and, elo and eloquently than, than I do. And you just, you hear that and you say, right, yes, of course. Okay, let's, let's move on. You can read the rest of section three yourself. I want to move on to section four. Trippers and askers surround me. People I meet, the effect upon me of my early life or the ward and city I live in or the nation, the latest dates, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors old and new, my dinner dress, associates, looks, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or of myself, or ill doing, or loss, or lack of money, or depressions, or exaltations, battles, the horrors of fratricidal war, the of course, this was written during the buildup of to the Civil War. The fever of doubtful news, the fitful events, right? In other words, the news. Here's Walt Whitman with the news. All the stuff, the news, everything from, you know, the gossip page and the political page and the, the latest, you know, what's going on in bloody Kansas and, and uh, all of that. Right, but what, what does that start with? Trippers and askers surround me, right? People ask me, well, what's your opinion, Walt? 
What do you think about this? What do you, what's your, and of course, this is so relevant to us now in a, in a, in a especially in a, at a time and especially in a year when the news is so crazy and, and, and distressing. And what does he say about all that? These come to me days and nights and go from me again. Right? These come to me days and nights and go from me again. It reminds me of the, the, the description of the way, uh, this is from the, the, one of the ancient Hindu texts, the, the difference between the, how the non-enlightened person experiences things and how the enlightened person does. That for the unenlightened, they say the impressions come, they're like, it's like they're carved in the rock. From the enlightened person, the stuff is carved, but it's like it's carved in the water, right? These come to me days and nights and go from me again, but they are not the me myself. And notice me, capital, capital M, me, right? Um, the, 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 the infinite me. That stuff's all the finite. It's okay. Uh, it has its importance, but now we're talking, now we're going to talk about the capital M me, the big self. And this very famous passage, apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am. And this, this section will sound familiar to some of you. Uh, you know, a lot of people have read this and go, oh, I'm not the only one. Yeah, this is what's been happening to me. Apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am. You know, it's what, what sometimes what's described as the witness, realizing that you're not the doer of the action, you're not in the action, you're the witness of the action. That the thing we call Dean or Kathy or Louisa or Walt, you know, is a character in the movie, but it's not you. You are the, spe you're a spectator. You're watching the movie. Apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am, stands amused, complacent, compassionating. That's a beautiful word, isn't it? This may be the first time that, that the, the noun compassion was turned into a verb, compassionating, right? You know, you're watching the movie, you could say, oh, well, you're, if you're watching the movie, you're detached. But when you're watching the movie from the stand, from the place of being infinite awareness, that's also the infinite capacity for compassion. We watch a good movie, we feel for the characters. We're not cold to them. Compassionating, idle, right? I mean, we, we could talk for 10 minutes about any one of these words, idle, you know, the this state of discovering you're the witness to activity is uh, it's the lazy person's paradise. You literally never do anything. Your, your body does a bunch of stuff. Your voice says a bunch of words. Your mind thinks a bunch of thoughts to, to other people. It looks like you're doing a bunch of stuff, but none of that is the me myself, the me myself, which you realize is what you are never does anything. It's idle. Unitary. It's just one. Looks down, is erect, or bends an arm on an impalpable certain rest. I love that image. Like you're, it's just always leaning on this, in, this, this invisible support. Looking with side curved head, curious what will come next. Hmm? both in and out of the game, right? So we're in, the, we're out of the movie, but we're also in the movie. There's the both, the both, the, 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 the infinite I and the finite expression of the I called Dean. And, and they're both valid, they're both important, they're both to be loved, both in and out of the game and watching and wondering at it. Backward I see in my own days where I, where I sweated through fog with linguists and contenders. I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. Right? 
Backward I see in my own days where I sweated through fog with linguists and contenders. In other words, this is again, the talkers talking. Yeah, I used to be one of them. I used to listen, you know, like anyone with a, an, an alive mind, I was trying to figure out what's what. I was, okay, who's, especially this was at a time when there were all these contending, you know, new spiritual movements. There was the Mormons and the Shakers and the, all these revival evangelical campaigns sweeping through the, 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 the New England and New York State. And, and, and yeah, I used to be, I used to be in there with the rest trying to, stuck in the fog, right? Sweated through fog with linguists. Right? A whole lot of what we argued about was, turns out, was just words. The stuff we contended about, it's just words. It was just, just linguistic differences. You, you say potato, I say potato. You say tomato, I say tomato. You say God, I say Brahman or Tao. Just splitting a bunch of linguistic hairs, right? But now I'm done with that. I, that's when I look backward. I'm done with that. Now I know, I've seen, I've experienced. But I don't go back and, you know, I don't jump back on Facebook and tell everyone that they're stupid and lost and confused, even if they are. I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait, right? So there's that word. I am the, the detached witness to all this, and I wait. I'm waiting for the rest. For what? I'm waiting for the rest of you. I'm waiting for everyone else to get here. Because when you wake up to this thing, you realize this is what I am and always have been. This is what everyone else is and always will be. They can't keep not seeing it forever. They can't sleep forever. They got to wake up sometime. Okay. How are we all doing with this? This, uh, See you all. Yeah, everybody good? Any any comments or questions or anything so far before we, we move ahead? Good stuff, eh? Okay. I, I just wanted to say, I feel mm -hmm. like that line in and out of the game is, you know, something you hear, that line. And yeah. I'm just wondering what the context is of that when we hear when we hear that line because I feel like that that phrase is used for is it for what I don't know I just feel like that's a famous thing from I guess just well it's, it's famous Whitman but it's, it's famous it's famous from Whitman yeah I yeah 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 um, it's a good one it's a, it is it is it is a good one. And, and, you know, uh, aside from the context of Whitman, I don't, I, I mean, I've not experienced hearing that elsewhere. You know, I hear a lot of people saying, okay, I'm going to get in the game now. Right? Well, Yapa, right. I've heard it too. I've heard it too. But yeah. I can't okay. think like, a, like Good. he's in the game, you know, but. Yeah, and, yeah, but we hear that. We're in the game, the election's right. coming. We all have to get in the game. Or I've had it now. Sure. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of the game. You sure. Know? No, I just was thinking people, this. People say, people say that when men say that when they get married. No, I'm out of the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. But, but it's such a beautiful, all the language, you know, it's so simple and clear and straightforward, but somehow the conviction of, you know, he's not making stuff up. You just know he's talking from experience that is so clear and so real that you just kind of have to nod your head. I don't know of anything else like this. All right. Let's read some more. Ah. <sighs> Section five, I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you. So again, it's the big self and the small, the big self, the soul, and the, the, the finite self, the other I am. 
the other I am must not abase itself to you and you must not be abased to the other. In other words, neither sh should be um, thrown under the bus, neither should be considered inferior. We ha you have to have both. Loaf, by the way, notice his unique spelling of the word loaf. Loaf, with, I, I, I don't know if he didn't know how to spell loaf or he just liked it that way. Add a silent E there. Add some silence to our loafing. There you go. Loaf with me on the grass. Loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best. Only the lull I like, the hum of your velvet voice. Right? I like what comes after the words. The hum. We, the, we, we do a lot of humming before we meditate, right? Om. Uh, <laughs> the lull, right? The lull, the, the pause, the silence after the voice. And then we get a little vignette. And remember, uh, I, I mentioned last week that when the first edition was published, um, uh, Whitman very wisely sent a copy to Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is the foremost man of letters of the day, who sent back this congratulatory letter, which um, Whitman used to publicize, uh, saying, boy, this is the poetry of what we've all been waiting for. And then as Whitman continued to put out more editions and add and expand, he expanded the erotic content and Emerson starting to feel his, you know, New England Puritan background, it's kind of backed away. He sort of later on withdrew his, his endorsement of Whitman, but was too late. So this is the kind of spicy thing that was too much for Emerson. I mind how once we lay such a transparent summer morning, how you settled your head athwart my hips. Okay, athwart means across. How you settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me, whoa, and parted the shirt from my bosom bone and plunged your tongue to my bare stripped heart and reached till you felt my beard and reached till you held my feet, right? So there's some, there's another character here. Now there's a second person, there's a you, who is that you? The you is, is never defined. I guess it's us. I guess it's the reader. And, you know, he starts at the, at the beginning, very beginning, every atom belonging to me as well belongs to you. Okay, we're in this ultimate um, camaraderie of being the same molecules, being the same beingness. But now he, for him, the camaraderie is also physical. It's also erotic. It's also sexual. Nothing is to be left out. But just that little, just four lines of that and the whoop. That, that's enough of that, enough of that for now. Swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth. Okay, there it is. There's the testimony of what happened to Walter Whitman that gave rise to the Walt vision. Here he's saying very explicitly, I have had the transcendental experience, right? And notice the, the, refer the biblical reference here, right? This is re re referring to, uh, to the words of, of St. Paul, the peace that passes, passes all understanding, right? The peace that, trans to, that passes, surpasses, transcends. Why are you at peace? Explain to me, what have you figured out that has brought you peace? Or what have you, what have, what have you figured out that's brought you peace? Nothing. What has happened that has made you peaceful? Nothing. What has changed? Nothing. Well, explain to me how, why you are at peace. I can't. This peace passes all understanding. It passes, it swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth. 
right? All the arguments sweating with linguists, all the theories, all the theology, when you experience this piece, you, you, that's it. You never have to listen to all those words again. That's what all those people were struggling to, to say. And it just rose around and spread around me swiftly. And I know, um, notice by the way, now the whole rest of this stanza, this paragraph, every line starts with the word and, and, and making it a, a growing rhythm, a growing force, but also emphasizing that all, every line now tells us something that arises out of this knowledge, this peace, this knowledge that passes all the argument of the earth, right? All the arguments I've heard, all the arguments I could ever hear, all the arguments of the earth. What, what comes, what, what are the, um, the corollaries? of that knowledge? What's the stuff that, that inevitably proceeds from having that transcendental experience? What, what else do you know? And I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own. And I know that the spirit of God is the brother of my own. And that all the men ever born are also my brothers and the women, my sisters and lovers and that a kelson of the creation is love, and limitless are leaves stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them, and mossy scabs of the worm fence, heaped stones, elder, mullen, and pokeweed. All right, whatever's there, that's it, right? He's going, he had, going from the divine vision to mossy scabs of the worm fence, going there in, you know, six, seven lines, because it's all God. It's all the expression of God. It's all the glory of God. In fact, he spells this out in the next section, section six. A child said, what is the grass? Right? This brilliant thing he, does, he introduces here. And then he picks this uh, uh, up. Uh, picks this up on and off throughout the, the rest of the poem, the, 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 the grass motif. Remember, the, the, the book is called Leaves of Grass. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. Now, Normally, if someone comes to you and says, what is the grass? You know, we can look up the Wikipedia article. We can do the description. Oh, it's a deciduous plant. I don't even know what deciduous means. I'm making this up. But, you know, it's a such and such plant. It, da, 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 da. We, can, we can, what's the genus and the species and, and all of that. It's a member of the, the, the vegetable kingdom. But that's not... But, but there's a deeper question being asked here. This, what is this that is going to be the same whether it's the grass or a, or a cup of Starbucks coffee? What is this? There was this um, Sung San, a uh, Korean Zen master who taught in actually in, in Rhode Island for many years. And... Um, he was, was famous for like putting something in front of you, like holding an orange in front of you and say, and demanding, what is this? What is this? Right? And, and, you know, you normally you'd think, well, I know what an orange is, but apparently he did it with such force with such that, you know, it's like, whoa, you're looking at an orange for the first time and seeing Wait, it's not just my limited, my little concept that this thing is this, just this fruit. It's this, this, it's, you know, it's the creation. It's, it's a mystery. It's a, it's a, you know, it's all, it's all an unfathomable, unfathomable mystery. It's all the sound of one hand clapping. So if Whitman doesn't use the sound of one hand clapping, he uses what is the grass, 
That's like, that's like, a, that's the koan here. That's the unanswerable question. What is this? What is the grass? How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he, right? But now he's going to guess anyway. He's going to give us some possible answers. And of course, the implication is there could be an infinite number of answers and they're all correct and they're all inadequate. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Right? The flag of my disposition. It's the, the my, whatever I'm feeling, it's, it's somehow reflected in the grass and in everything else in the natural world. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped. Now that's a little joke, you know. I don't know if, if young people know this anymore, but but I can remember when the the old you know the thing was when a woman wanted to meet a man. Right, the the old cliche was she would drop her handkerchief, she would accidentally on purpose drop her handkerchief, and then the man that would give the man a a pretext to go, oh excuse me, miss, I I believe you dropped this, and then they could strike up a conversation, start a romance, get married live happily ever after, right? The hat, there's some Bugs Bunny cartoons <laughs> where that happens, right? But here, the, 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 the sweetie pie who drops the handkerchief for Walt to pick up is God. Dropping it on purpose, right? Designedly. Designedly means deliberately. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift, right? God's perfume is on it. A scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, whose? Right? That's the grass. It's the, the, the monogrammed, deliberately dropped handkerchief of God. And of course, if that's true of the grass, it's true of everything. It's all God's handkerchief. God keeps dropping these handkerchiefs to try to meet us, to get us to meet him, her, it. When are we going to do it? When are we going to pick up the handkerchief? When are we going to make that date? When are we going to live happily ever after? Or I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, right? And around the time of Whitman, we, we had uh, the, the, some of the, the explorers and the English and the French, under English and French imperialism, going into to Egypt and places. They're starting to, to, to um, the archaeologists were starting to dig up the hieroglyphics. And so look at how he uses that. Oh, the grass is a uniform hieroglyphic right? It's like, it's like text. It, it, every stroke is the same, but it's telling me something. And it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white. Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same, I receive them the same. Right? So here's another corollary of his enlightened vision, which is this egalitarianism. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're from all these different regions of the country uh, that were still much less united than we are now, that really still felt very much like different countries. Whether you're a congressman, I'm not sure what cuff means. I, I, I suspect it means kind of a, a low life. Um, uh, I give them the same, I receive them the same. I'll have to look this up in my dictionary of slang and get back to you. And now it seems to me, right, the grass seems to me, the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Wow. Suddenly it becomes very solemn. The beautiful uncut hair of graves. A lot of dying going on in his time. A lot of 
people being cut down, meaning, you know, they had their pandemic. Their pandemic was, was consumption, tuberculosis. I've been doing some more research on Emily Dickinson. The year that Emily Dickinson was 14 years old, four of her close friends and relatives died. How traumatic is that? People had to deal with that. Find an answer. Tenderly will I use you, curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people or from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are the mother's laps. Ah, here's an interesting kind of, you know, what can you say to a person whose child has died, whose offspring is taken from their mother's laps? Ah, now the grass, the grass, which is, which is the, the signature of God and the, the glory of God, that's, that's become the mother's lens. There's some sense of, if, you know, we, we said earlier, we saw him saying, you know, about the, just the, somehow the rightness of everything. Yet yeah, tell that to a parent whose child has died. That's a little more challenging. Well, there he's, you know, in a very gentle, modest, tender way, he's sneaking up on that. Here you are, here you, the grass, you are the mother's lens. I want to go on. I'll leave the rest of section six to, to you to read on your own, because I want to get to this incredible thing in section seven, which picks up on that idea. Has anyone supposed it lucky to be born? I hasten to inform him or her, it is just as lucky to die. And I know it, right? Again, there's the sureness. Man, that's a challenging statement. It's just as lucky to die. And I know it. I'm not theorizing. I, I don't believe this because I read it in a book, in a scripture or a, some book or something. I know it. Right? And you can only know it if you've been, if you've clearly, clearly experienced down to your bones that transcendence that, tra that is beyond birth and death. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new washed babe. Right now here is it kind of adds a new layer to the way he's proceeding here, which is we could say identification. Most of us are identified with, 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 you know, this concept of the finite self. I think I'm Dean, I'm five foot 10, I'm 168 pounds. Uh, I, I'm this thing. I'm identified with it. Now, when we experience that, no, you're not limited to that. Your boundlessness, you're non-identified, great. But then that also means you are free to identify with, you know, when you're, when you're no longer caught up in identifying as your little wave, you realize I'm the ocean. That means you can also identify as all the waves. And that is, becomes key happening throughout this this long poem, right? And here we see him starting to do it. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new washed babe, right? I am the dying one, I'm, right? He just said, I know it, right? I've experienced both. I experience it all the time. I, I pass death with the dying birth with the new washed babe and am not contained between my hat and boots. Boy, it can't be clearer than that. I'm not five foot 10, 168 pounds. I'm not contained in this thing. I'm out, out here. And peruse, peruse means read, and peruse manifold objects, no two alike and every one good, the earth good and the stars good and their adjuncts all good, right? It's all good. I am not an earth nor an adjunct of an earth. I am the mate and companion of people, all just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Right, very important. We have to 
you know, when, when you become, when you, when you're granted the divine gift, you, you get to drink the divine intoxicating soma, the, the beverage of enlightenment and realize, oh, I'm the infinite. It's very, very important to keep track of. And so is everyone else. Otherwise, then you're a fanatic, then you, then, then you become a cult leader or something. You know, if you have the impartial vision, it, it, rather the partial vision. And I think that that's happened in a lot of cases. You know, where someone gets a, a, some of this, you know, they, they get that, that experience of the boundlessness, but they're, they still, they bring their ego with them. They bring their, and it's like, oh, I'm boundless Dean. Not I'm boundless being this. I'm boundless Dean. See, I brought the, I've, I've, I've done, this is the real sin of bringing the, the real confusion of bringing the, the, the limited I, identification with the small self into the bigness. So I'm God and you're not. But if you stick with me, I can connect you with, with, with the divine. That way lies disaster. So, but Whitman is too smart for that. They do not know how immortal, right? They're all just as immortal and fathomless as mine. Right, fathomless, there's no bottom to them. infinitely deep. All just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own. For me, mine, male and female. Right, Kathy, you were asking last week about his sexuality, and you know, I was saying omnisexual. He wants to make love to the to the universe, and you know, if bisexual is just like sure that for him that goes with the territory. For me, mine, male and female. For me, those that have been boys and that love women. For me, the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted. For me, the sweetheart and the old maid, for me mothers and mothers of mothers, for me lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears, for me children and the begetters of children. Notice he does this a lot where he'll start every line for a while with the same word, right? And this is, especially when you're writing free verse, when you don't have meter, in other words, you don't have a defined rhythm and you don't have rhyme, hold the thing together. How do you hold the thing together? How do you give it a feeling of unity? And, and one way to do it is through the repetition, through, through starting uh, lines with the same first word. But you can't just do it artificially. It's got to be coming out of the vision, coming out of, okay, now we're getting swelling waves of this same thing. We're going to take a ride, you know, as in, in you know, the, the jazz musicians would say, we're going to take a ride on on this theme for a while, right? And then to all of those, he says, um, undrape, you are not guilty to me, nor stale, nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham, whether or no, and am around tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and cannot be shaken away, right? Undrape right? Take off your clothes, strip, take it off. You are not guilty to me. There's nothing guilty about that. There's nothing unwholesome. As he said, not an inch nor a particle of an inch shall be is vile, right? I see through your clothes. I remember a friend of mine in the 60s, you know, when we wore buttons with slogans like, you know, make love, not war, and, and, and so forth, ban the bomb. And, and this one friend had a button that said, warning, I am naked under my clothes, right? So, right, our nakedness, the, the, our, the, our bodiness, our physicality is, you can't hide it from, from Walt. He's like Superman. He's got the, the x-ray vision and am around tenacious, acquisitive, right? You can't get rid of me. You can't, you can't go, whoa, wait a minute, that, that, that all, that big embrace of Waltz, that big vision, I, that's too much, I wanna get away from it. No, you can't because it's not 
because it because he's the you know it's again it's like getting away from the universe when he's identified with the universe that's that's you you can't get away from him so once again we're run out of time so um we all good okay so let's uh i I'm thinking to do, uh, okay, we do maybe one more, one more Sunday on, on Whitman. There's so much good stuff here. And as I said, we're, we won't get close to, to doing all the sections together. But, you know, maybe if you feel motivated, read ahead, read the thing on your own. Um, and um, I gave you the link last time. And... Um, if there's particular sections you want to talk about, let me know. Drop me an email before next Sunday. We'll do one more Sunday on Whitman, then we'll move on to something else. Okay? Okay. Anything else? Yes. Any new business? No. Any old business? <laughs> new business? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thank you.